Today I'm going to talk about totes, container gardening, doesn't matter if it's a tote or a bucket or a flower pot, but why would you put it somewhere? Up, down, or inside? Let's give that some thought and we're all getting ready to set up our garden soon. Let's do it in a fashion in which it will be beneficial for us as well as our plants. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. I'm listening to the birds sing. Oh, the birds are singing. They're getting ready to start nesting and they already are. And I wanted to talk about gardening. So many of you are gonna set up raised beds, container gardening, due to space, due to roots, due to critters, whatever. They don't wanna plant in the ground. I do both. Some people do both, Gary does both. But today I wanna to talk about why you would set up something in a certain way. Let's walk over and look at my wall. You know I tore it apart this year. You know what? It only took me a couple hours, it was so easy. Container gardening, especially in totes, storage containers, you can just maneuver those anywhere you want in a matter of minutes, really. And I love it, and I've been doing it for years. I changed it up this year. I've got them going up and down, up and down, all the way across. Why would I do that? Well, I did that because of space and depth. So let's talk about the ones on the chair. Why would you put them on a chair or a table or bricks or wherever way you want to put them up? Why would you put them up? Well, you might put them up because you don't have to bend. You can walk right over, service your plants, take care of your new seedlings and see exactly what's going on. Now, what benefit are you going to get out of that besides that? Easy. If you make gardening easy, woo! Then you'll continue to garden. There is a true zucchini growing in there. I just planted it. Had a little cover over it just to keep the little critters away. Now that is going to have really rich water coming out of it. And I've got the holes in the front. I leave a little bit of water in there. That's why it's a couple inches up, or I should say, yeah, a couple inches up, one to two inches up because we here in Southern California can get really dry as we get into late spring, summer, and fall. So this way, if I don't water them and they're running out of water, the plants in there can reach down to the bottom and grab some of that water, plus it will slowly work its way up. So you have to set it up in the fashion you wanna set it up. But let's talk about the difference between a container being up and a container down. Up is for ease, for looks, for maybe you just don't want to have it on the ground for whatever reason. You would not want to put a container like this on a wooden deck, not straight down on the wood itself. It would have to have some sort of airflow. If you don't, you know how I compost in place. Wood, which is the wood chips you see in trees that are falling, will return back to earth. And that means it will take your deck with it. That's why you want airflow. If there's airflow, the microbes cannot get in there and eat it. They won't, so you are in good shape on that. Now, having it on the ground here, we've got soil. Now that is gonna create a wonderful ecosystem under that tote right there. As I water it, dampness will be under that tote. And again, this can be a bucket, a raised bed, whatever, as long as there's a bottom. We're talking about something with a bottom. You'll have an ecosystem under there with microbes, earthworms, everything working. Now. That is fabulous. You can plant right next to the totes. I've done that and grow. I have grown the biggest zucchinis there and wonderful plants being next to a tote. Why? Because they're benefiting from what's underneath. Everything under that tote is slowly breaking down. And then you've got that wonderful water that's coming out of it that is like a plant fertilizer all the time. If you've set it up like I do, I don't go buy bags of potting soil. One of these, eight, these are 18 gallons up high. One of these 18 gallon totes could take two bags of potting soil. That could be anywhere from 20 to $60, depending on the type you buy. I can't do that. None of these this year have potting soil. But that's not to say you can not set it up maybe like I've set it up. Load it up with whatever you want on the bottom. You've seen it, go back and see the videos. We're not gonna go into that because that's a whole video, but you could put all kinds of stuff on the bottom. Some people, if they're on a deck and they don't want to have heavy weight, they put styrofoam on the bottom. I load it up with branches off of trees and leaves and everything all on the bottom. I practically go about halfway up. And then I cover it with whatever matter I want, be it a little bit of potting soil or soil from another tote that broke down. It's gonna break down in a matter of weeks, couple months, you're gonna have your own potting soil. 
that you are going to create, your, your own wonderful compost that you've created by simply layering like that, throwing everything in there. You know what? You got a lot of pine trees. Load the whole bottom up with pine cones. Load it up with a little bit of pine needles. Pine needles don't break down that well, but they will. it's a slow release. You would really if you want to chop them up if you want them to break down really fast. Mix in green and brown and you will do great. But again, going back to why do we want to put them up? My chair garden is all up. My chair garden is set up in a fashion in which it takes me minutes to take care of. That's the whole idea of this. Nothing is on the ground except for the new pots I've now put in there. Look how they're growing. Look at the celery taking off down there. I literally can come in here and water everything in a matter of less than a minute, really. Hit it with a little water, and then whatever is running out will now be feeding the plants on the bottom in the pots. The whole idea is to make it easy. And again, the other thing is, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to do? Now, let's talk about my papayas we grow. A lot of people have asked over the years, how in the world do you grow papayas? We've grown such beautiful, massive, let's say trees. They're not really trees, but let's say beautiful papaya trees. But we don't get any fruit. Well, papayas are very, very heavy feeders. A lot like your tomatoes, your squash, and a lot of other plants. If you take a tote, I'm going to say a tote. Again, you can use a bucket, whatever you want. If you take a tote and sit it next to a papaya, I'm using that as an example. And yes, you can do it with any fruit tree. You've got all those microbes and earthworms gravitating to be under that tote because that is the best real estate in town to live under. They've got food, they've got dampness, they can move around and they can grab a lot of nutrients that they need. Well, your plants will benefit too if you take that tote and put it a foot or so from your trees. Can you imagine you are growing whatever you wanna grow a vegetable plant in there or flowers if you want. And in the meantime, with everything breaking down, you're constantly feeding your fruit trees. Can you imagine? Free fertilizer, massive trees. Our papayas took off. They were being composted. They were just coming up in a container like those. And then I just grabbed the container, moved the container, put another one next to it. And they have been growing papayas nonstop. We've got them all over the place growing like that. But they need food. In the wild, in nature, all those leaves would fall to the ground. All those massive fruits that they grow would fall to the ground. And they'd rot. And you go, ah, they're rotting. But that's what's feeding the plants. Sure, some of the animals are going to take away some of the papaya. But not all of it. They can't get it all. It's going to fall, smash to the ground the pieces. The whole cycle of seeds and everything growing again, because let me tell you, it grows in the breaking down manner. It doesn't wait. Most of your seeds and most of your plants do not need to wait for your kitchen scraps to break down. We'll get into that another day. Today, I just want to talk about where you want to put your totes and how it can be beneficial to you. The other thing is putting pots in containers. Again, you're creating the same setup as you did here on the ground. You're now creating it on the top. So when you have a pot on the top and you water this, I'm going to have tons of earthworms under that pot. So now I've got the same thing going on here with this as I've got what's going on here with this. So the bottom of that is going to be damp. There's no sun on it, say. It's going to be shaded and damp. It's going to hold the moisture. It can't evaporate. So all the earthworms are going to live there. They're going to congregate there. And they're going to love it. Well, the same thing is happening here when you layer. You can layer in any size, big or small. You want to leave a little bit of room like this is a zucchini. I want to make sure it's got enough room to spread its wings and grow. But that's what you want to think about. What way is going to work for you? Now, if this is too much and you go, oh, no, you're confusing me, then just put it wherever you want. Because the main thing is, I want you to grow something. And once you start... I will warn you, it's nonstop. Once you're successful and you love it and you will be, you'll just keep wanting to grow more and more. You can also put totes on totes. Now these totes here on these chairs, these are just patio chairs, are 18 gallon totes. You can't get a 30 for a chair. Not that it won't hold it, it doesn't fit. But you can put two chairs together face to face and put a 30 gallon on two chairs. So that will work. As far as stacking them, if you want to stack your totes, 
make sure the bottom totes are heavy duty totes. They will cost you more, but you know what? I got those at Walmart once for $10. They had them on sale. I've also bought some at thrift stores for $4 because they got in the heavy duty. Those you can stack. Those are designed to be stackable totes. So you could stack them in a garage all the way up. They take the weight. Those you can stack. Put the ones that are stackable on the bottom and then you can put two lightweight ones, 18 gallon totes that you can get anywhere for five to seven dollars on the top, just like this. Last year, this was just loaded with cucumbers and tomatoes and zucchini and all kinds of stuff growing. This one will feed the Moringa when it comes back this spring. Having totes around there, honestly, I never set this up last year, but I will this year. The whole idea is you can make your container gardening work for you. Not just grow the vegetables you want, but to actually work for you. So you can have a tote on the ground that's constantly feeding another plant, a tree, or whatever you want. Think about how you want to set it up. And as far as looks, you set it up for as pretty as you want. I've got a rainbow garden with all different color totes. I've got my chair garden that's Basically, the chairs were painted. You know about it. Go back and watch it, why they were painted and how long ago. And just simple gray totes that I got from Walmart for five bucks. Actually, they weren't even five at the time. Last year, I think they were four eighty-eight. Thrift stores, one to two dollars. So many of you have told me you went to a thrift store. They were so happy to get rid of them. Some people got them for free because they stack up there and they don't want them. Generally, you pay anywhere from one to three dollars at a thrift store for an 18 gallon tote. 18 is perfect. It's not too big. It's not too small. You can grow a lot in it. You can have it up on a chair, a simple chair, be it a patio chair, an old dining room chair, whatever will hold your weight. You can sit in, you can put a tote on there. 30 gallons is longer, so you'll have to put two chairs together. Or put them on the ground, put them on bricks, put them on whatever you want. Like with the ponds are built, with just the simple cement blocks. Get four blocks, put them on four blocks. You want it taller? Get six blocks, make it taller, make it higher than a chair. The blocks are only like a buck a piece. So it's gonna be cheaper than a chair if you're not picking them up out of the trash like I am or buying them at a thrift store for two to four dollars a piece. So think about how this garden is going to work for you. Think about it as you set it up. Do you wanna grow geranium on the bottom next to the drain holes? Like I've been doing? Do you wanna grow zucchini on the bottom? Do you want it up so you don't have to bend? Do you want it in a sunny location? Half sunny location? Semi-shade? Shady, depending on what you're going to grow. And you know what? After all this, what we talked about, you can look at it one day and go, I don't like it. I don't want it there. And tear the whole thing apart and start over. Because this is not a six-foot raised bed. These are 18 gallon totes, unless you go with 30, and you can just move them anytime you want. And this is why I love totes. So think about how you want to set yours up. Start slow, one at a time. Had a couple of you say, it's expensive. It's not expensive. I'm gonna have to, I, I really don't like saying it's not or, or over put my two cents in there, but I'm gonna tell you something. It's not expensive. How much is toilet paper? You use toilet paper, and once you do, which, you know, what do you do with it? You flush it. These will last you for years. I've got some totes in my garden right now that are probably over five years old now going strong. So think about it when you're setting it up this spring. How do you want to set it up? And if it gets too complicated because you're thinking, gee, all I wanted was going to throw a tote on a chair and put some some stuff in there and put a little potting soil on the top and I was going to grow tomatoes and peppers in, then do it because totes can easily be changed up at any time you want. This is why they're my favorite thing. And you know what? If you go back to the old videos, you will find that Gary swore up and down, I will never put a tote in my garden. He's got more totes, I think, in his garden than I've got in mine, but boy, is he growing a ton of stuff, and you know that. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Ask your questions and let me say, so many of you are sitting there going, I know that, I know that answer. She asked the question. I remember Robbie saying that, or I did it this way and it worked great for me. Answer their questions. I give you permission. Keep it clean and nice and tell them, hey, I did it this way, it worked great. Make a community out of it. Answer each other, this is wonderful. It will help me out and it will help out each and every one of you. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget, 
to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.